Okay, so anyway, I'm going to fry up some tomatoes. I actually picked them out kind of green. This one's green on the bottom and a little bit red on the top. And that's kind of the way I like them. I don't like them to be totally green. This one's a little bit redder, but it's still hard as a rock. So it's, it's fine to fry. I am going to um, slice them, and I'm going to slice them pretty thin. I don't like it when they're sliced too thick, okay? Two different ways. I'm going to fry some in just plain flour the way I like them. And then I'm going to put a little cornmeal in it for you cornmeal lovers. Um, for y'all. Now you can use cornmeal mix or you can use real cornmeal, whichever one you want to do. This is uh, the tomatoes. And I'm going to throw them in one of these. And, um, and then I'm going to put some buttermilk on them. Right quick. Well, well. I'm just the craziest cook. It, it never fails. I put something in the floor no matter what I'm doing. You know, my dogs would like it if this wasn't a tomato. But they ain't going to like a tomato too very much. All right. So there's my tomatoes. You can see that some of them look green and some of them look a little bit pink. But that's how I like them. I don't like them to be all green. To me, they don't have as good of a flavor when they're all green. Okay, and that's one reason I don't like fried green tomatoes lots of times is because it, they don't have enough flavor in them. Um, and y'all know me and my veggies. I like for my veggies to taste like veggies. So we're going to put a little bit of buttermilk in here. And then all we're going to do is let that sit there for a minute. I'll go ahead and flip them over and make sure all of them are getting saturated or whatever. Move them all around in the buttermilk. That's not real thick buttermilk, but it is whole buttermilk. I should have sh shook it, I guess. But I just used it yesterday, so it ain't it ain't too watery on the top. Okay, that's our tomatoes for now. Soak it in the buttermilk. I'm going to sit them right here for a second. Then I'm going to mix up, up some batter. All I'm going to put in here for our um, first batch is going to be self-rising flour because that's the way I like to fry everything. Self-rising flour. I'm going to put in about two-thirds cup of self-rising flour. I'm going to put in, let me get some salt and pepper. I'm going to put in about half a teaspoon of salt. And then <clears throat> I want to put in about a teaspoon or two of, well, good Lord, I call that salt and it's pepper. Y'all going to have to look over me. It's the end of the day. I put in about a half a teaspoon to three quarters of a teaspoon of pepper, and I put in a good teaspoon and a half of salt. We're going to mix it up a little bit. Now, let's take our tomatoes and put them right here. I'm going to go ahead and start the skillet getting hot. I'm going to use my copper skillet today because I don't want them to stick. I want them to be beautiful. Okay? So we're going to put a little oil in this copper skillet. You don't want to put too much. And it's simple. Salt, pepper, self-rising flour, buttermilk, sliced green tomatoes, simple dimple. You got your oil in the pan. Um, now, if you want to dress your tomatoes up, you can throw anything in there you want to. And I might dress them, a I might dress them up a little bit when we make our uh, cornmeal ones, okay? But the first three or four I'm going to do is going to be self-rising flour because I want you all to see the difference in the way they look, in the way they crunch, in the way they taste. And we'll let Chris come in here and try both of them and see which one he likes the best. It's getting hot. All right, so I'm just going to shake one off good. Put it in my flour. Coat it good. And I'm going to add them all at the same time. And that way I don't have to... Um, Flip them at different times. None of us in our family have ever been, you know, I don't remember my granny frying them that much or my mama. 
So it's just not something we ate a lot of growing up. All right, I got that on a medium, and this is a big eye, so I might have to turn it down just a little bit. It's got a lot of heat coming out of it. So I put those three in there together. I'll just have to keep up with it. Okay, I've got those three in there, and I think what I'm going to do is um, put the cornmeal in the rest of these. So let me go pour a little bit of this flour out. Where's my little scooper duper? Now this is going to be the one that's got cornmeal in it. And all of y'all are surprised that I'll put cornmeal in okra and different things. And you're about to see, I think, why. That's why I thought I'd do them two different ways for y'all. I'm going to add just a little bit of flour or this cornmeal like never going to stick to them. So I guess you could go almost half and half. Mine's really a little bit more cornmeal than it is flour, so it's probably more like a half a cup of cornmeal with a third cup of flour. It's more like my consistency now. Now I need to flip these suckers. I need to get me something. All right, here we go. This is just the self-rising flour ones. You can see they're frying up good. Everything's clinging to them good and not coming off. Let me get some more in here. Skillet's hot. Now this is the cornmeal ones, and I added a little more salt and pepper. Now I'm just not going to put anything else in them, and that way we can really do more of a taste test on which one tastes better. There's one going in. And I know y'all could add some stuff, but you know I do basic cooking. Salt, pepper, buttermilk. Really do eat nothing better. Even with my fried chicken, really and truly, me putting that ranch dressing in there, you don't have to do that. You could just use salt, pepper, a little paprika. If you like garlic salt, you can put a little in it, but you don't have to. But now these tomatoes are... Um, Going in a cornmeal, flour, salt and pepper base. The corn smells nice frying in there. I can tell you that. I can smell the cornmeal. All I did hold it up so some of that grease would run off of it. You're going to see how pretty and golden brown they are. They're really, really pretty. I want them to cook. Lots of times people don't cook them long enough, too. And I think some of these fast, I think some of these restaurants, even if it's, you know, whoops, let me show you how pretty it looks up close. Let me let some of the grease run off of it. I guess y'all can see that. Y'all get to see it better in a minute anyway. I'm going to let these fry a little bit longer because they're a little bit thicker. And I'm actually going to turn it up just a hair because it's not really getting on this brown quite the, the other cornmeal once it's brown as fast as I want it to. I turn off my oven. I never turned it off and I got my casserole out. I guess I'll take these out. Food. Sorry, y'all. I say words like that when I'm cooking. <laughs> All right. Now, these are the, the ones that are left in here, I believe, are all cornmeal. Let's see if we can flip one of these yet. They've been in there for a while. This is the cornmeal one. Oh, it's looking pretty good. Maybe it will stick. This is a good skillet, y'all. These copper ones are pretty good now. I might have to eat my own words before it's over. Chris will be the judge, won't he? 
There's the cornmeal when it's flipped over now. And I'll try to drain them on the, in about the same amount of time so that one won't be greasier than the other for him to take. All right, let's get this out. Chris, go ahead, baby, and come in here and make you something to drink because you're going to be our tester. Actually, the cornmeal might, might be the winner. It's actually going to be pretty crunchy looking. You live and learn. That's why I did it both ways, y'all. I wanted to see the difference. All right, let me put this on the back and turn off the eye. Now, these are the cornmeal ones, and I'm going to pat them. Uh, trying to get some of the grease off of them. See how greasy they are? And most people don't do that. They just put them on the plate. Um... And I'm not all into that. Okay, Christopher, I'm not going to let you taste it on my white plate. Well, I guess I got another one. No, I got another one. So we're going to put a cornmeal one on his plate. Now they're hotter. And we're going to put one with self-rising flour on his plate. You can see the difference in how they look. Wait just a minute, Mr. Nichols. Hmm. Do, do you already have a fork? Yes. Okay, Chris is going to taste the difference in them. They've got the same seasonings, just different batter. He's cutting into the one with flour, flour first. And it's going to be the coolest one. How is it? Chris is not a big fan of fried green tomatoes either. Good. Is it good? Mm -hmm. So does it get to drink of water, ain't you, baby? It's not real greasy. It's not? You can taste this too while you're at it. Well, this you know. It's a lot harder. I'm gonna taste this too, y'all. But it's just cause of the Well, it's a little greener tomato too. Oh. See how it kind of wants to slide off? Oh, I do too. Girl, uh, guys and girls, the, the flower one won. I'm telling you, there's nothing better to bread something in than self-rising flour. I know that y'all are cornmeal lovers. We love cornbread just as much as anybody else. We eat cornbread and milk all the time. You can mix the two together. It's probably good. I did mix it together with this one. Flour it's flour and, and cornmeal. Oh, really? Yeah, because if I didn't, it would never stay on. We're having fried green tomatoes and um, Texas hash for supper, and it's going to be delicious. Thanks for watching Color Valley Cooks, where we cook like our mamas did, and Chris is drinking some Coca-Cola.